Next, we're going to talk about specular reflection. Specular reflection uh, is highly dependent on the angle of incination. The next uh, example, we'll talk about the, uh, the right upper guardian view of the uh, liver and, and right kidney. You can see that the uh, fascia, the gerota fascia uh, surrounding the kidney, has uh, variation in terms of intensity. In the middle of the image, you see a bright hyperchoic uh, echo, whereas uh, further down to, uh, up towards the superior pole, the, uh, the layer is uh, more hypochoic. If we draw a, a normal line uh, onto the uh, hyperchoic fascia in the, uh, the upper uh, near field, uh, the middle of the image, and uh, uh, put an ultrasound beam uh, insinating on this uh, fascia and showing the returning echo. The angle of insination is you know, around 85 to 90 degrees. Specifically for specular reflectors like the fascia or pleura or diaphragm, you will get a strong reflection. And the reason for this is simple. As the beam comes out from the transducer, it returns within uh, the field of view to the transducer, so the echo will be higher. Now on the other hand, if you draw a normal line towards the more hypochoic uh, region of the, uh, the superior part of the kidney, and you uh, draw an incoming ultrasound beam uh, reflecting off of that surface, you see that because the, uh, the, the angle of insinuation in this case is much less than 85, 90 degrees, it's probably around 60, 65, 70 degrees. In this case, the incoming beam hits the fascia, but it reflects outside the field of view. So if you sum up all the ultrasound beams, uh, you know, reflecting off of the surface, there is much less. Uh, reflection going back to the receiver. And therefore, with this uh, decreased angle of insinuation that is very far from 90 degrees, you end up having uh, a much less, uh, more of a hypochoic uh, and not hyperechoic reflection. And this is a prime example of specular reflection. It's highly dependent on angle of insinuation. Finally, uh, the last uh, order of business is to talk about speckle. Speckle technically is an artifact due to acoustic scatterers. As you know from the first lecture, acoustic scatter is highly dependent on the frequency. The higher the frequency, the more uh, is the reflection coming back from these scatterers. The mechanism is due to constructive and destructive interference. And as I mentioned, the texture becomes finer and more intense with higher ultrasound frequency. This is a uh, ultrasound image of the liver, which is an example of a, um, a structure with speckle. Other structures include uh, thyroid, um, testicles, and uh, a lot of kind of smaller organs uh, that uh, have this property. Let's talk about the four types of ultrasound artifacts. Number one, resolution related artifacts. This is similar to what we talked about in the transducers lecture, where resolution or the limitations thereof can cause artifacts. Second one, is propagation related artifacts. This forms the bulk of the artifacts we'll talk about in this lecture. The third type of artifacts that actually are more commonly appreciated in ultrasound scanning in the clinical setting is attenuation related artifacts. And the fourth one, which might be a little more esoteric to the common users of ultrasound, is Doppler and color instrumentation related artifacts. So this is the template of this lecture. The four types of artifacts again, resolution, propagation, attenuation, and Doppler. Let's first start off discussing resolution-related artifacts. Let's start by talking about axial resolution. By definition, axial resolution is defined as the failure to resolve two separate reflectors located parallel to the beam line. Let's take two point reflectors as indicated by the two blue circles, separated by spacing Z. As the ultrasound beam converges on these objects, recall that axial resolution is defined as the velocity of the speed of sound times the pulse duration divided by 2, or simply is the spatial pulse length divided by 2. Now, if the separation Z is greater than this SPL divided by 2 metric, as we know from the transducer physics lecture, this means that you can resolve the two objects. The two pixels will show up on the ultrasound screen separated by spacing Z. This is the case where axial resolution of the two objects is met. 
within the confines of the ultrasound system. Now suppose the same two point reflectors are now moved closer together such that the spacing z is less than the spatial pulse length divided by 2. Now in this instance what will happen? Of course you expect that the two point reflectors cannot be resolved in the axial resolution direction as a result you, they merge into one line. The objects are merged. Axial resolution is exceeded. Now let's go on and talk about lateral resolution. By definition Lateral resolution is defined as a failure to resolve two separate reflectors located perpendicular to the beamline. Obviously, aside from being a function of frequency, lateral resolution is also a function of beam width, or transducer design, by definition. Let's take two point reflectors located lateral to each other, the two blue circles. As the ultrasound beam converges on these two objects, if the spacing is in comparison to the beam width such that the beam width is less than the lateral spacing of the two objects, then by definition you will be able to resolve the two objects in the lateral direction. There will be two pixels separated by lateral distance and it will be two pixels corresponding to the two original point reflectors. Let's talk about beam width effect number one. Obviously, if you do not meet the lateral res resolution criteria, there will be merging of point reflectors. For example, the two blue point reflectors, the spacing is such that it is less than the beam width, or, look at the other way, beam width is greater than lateral spacing of two objects. In that instance, the two point objects will merge into a line. So, just think in terms of lateral resolution, Beam effect number one, point objects that cannot be resolved laterally will become a line. Now what is the second beam effect that you should remember? That is, fill in of anechoic structure. What are anechoic structures? It could be a cyst, such as a cyst in the liver. If the dimension of the cyst is less than the beam width, such that from edge to edge cannot be resolved in a lateral direction, what we're going to have on ultrasound screen is that the anechoic structure that is dark within a cystic boundary will appear as filled in because of the lack of lateral resolution, hence fill in defect. Well, just to clarify the point that we discussed in this slide, fill in defect of a cystic structure, or in this case, in generic terms, an anechoic tube, means that the signal within the cystic structure, which is originally anechoic or black in terms of ultrasound, or lack of signal, will become hyperechoic, which is equivalent to fill in. Now let's finish up the trifecta of resolution artifacts. On top of axial and lateral resolutions, you have slice thickness resolution limitation which is due to the finite width of the beam producing extraneous echoes in the normally anechoic or echo-free structures. In effect, this is defined uh, as a partial volume effect, which is commonly encountered in CT scans. This is a uh, three-dimensional rendition of the uh, real-life ultrasound beam. It is not two-dimensional, in fact it is three-dimensional. Ultrasound beam is thinnest in the out-of-plane direction at the focal zone, it is thicker at the potential surface, and it is tremendously increased beyond the focal zone. Therefore, you can tell that effects from outside the, uh, the plane of interest would affect this uh, in-plane resolution significantly if you're far away from the focal zone. Even within the focal zone, you have to contend with this partial volume effect as defined by the arrows within this green zone, or, or the z-direction, or the outer plane direction, and that could cause uh, signals to be uh, projected within the objects of interest. Here is an example. Longitudinal scan of bladder wall, of the bladder. You can see the hyperchoic uh, refractivity or signal of the fascia plane surrounding uh, the bladder. And you have this uh, pseudo sludge within the bladder. This is uh, an artifact. There's actually no blood, uh, no hyperchoic uh, fluid within the bladder. This is all due to size thickness, such that the uh, hyperreflectivity 
uh, from the fascia, fascia uh, layers outside the bladder is contributing uh, to signals to be projected within the bladder, uh, inside the bladder. Therefore, slight six artifact in this case is causing the uh, artifacts within the bladder. An alternative explanation of this, as we'll discuss uh, later on in this lecture, is grating lobes. Grating lobes are also uh, hypothesized to cause pseudo sludge in bladder. So in summary, in terms of resolution artifacts, what are the potential solutions? Well, for axial resolution, the fix is to use high ultrasound frequency as tolerated. Obviously, you uh, lose penetration depth. For lateral resolution, you want to locate the focal zone to or below the level of interest. Use high frequency, and but beware of fill-in defects. For slice thickness, use the same fixes as for lateral resolution, frequency, obviously, and also reposition patient to dispel gas.